Okay, take your sword out of your belt if you got it. Okay, you want to hold it in your right hand, and the curve, which is the sharp edge, is toward you. So think of like how you hold a knife in a safe way. You always hold it with the blade, the cutting edge toward you. So you're thinking of holding the blade toward you just like you would a, a regular knife. Um, if you have the suba, which is the sword guard, okay, you're gonna put your thumb on that and kind of hold it and in place so that it stays in the actual sheath or the side of it, okay? So you wanna hold it this way. Down by your right side. We're going to come to attention. Good stay. Ready? Let's. All right. Then we're from there. Take your sword. Bring it up. Okay. Change hands and bring it to your left side. All right. If you have a uh, a saya, okay, the sword go. I mean the sheath. Go ahead and put that put that in your belt. If you don't, don't worry about it. Keep it right where it is now. <laughs> and the string that I have is called the sagio, that is wrapped over and then crosses over and under and then over and under again and then pulls forward. And grab it, there it is, like so. Okay? And the sword hangs in front. I'm trying to get it so that the end of the sword, or the end of the uh, handle there, is right about my center. Okay, and the sword is not quite level, but it's close to it, okay? So it's somewhat balanced here, all right? Now, if you're holding the sword, that's fine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna draw the sword. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna come from here, bring my left hand up. I'm going to knock the sword out of the saya. Okay, so I'm gonna push it out with my thumb, and then I'm going to reach up with my right hand and grab the sword. Now, I don't wanna grab it right next to the, to the uh, uh, suba. I wanna grab it a little bit out, about a couple fingers away from that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out and at the same time pull the saya down. So I'm pulling it up like this, okay, to remove it from the, from the uh, saya. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to, it's like a push-pull, like karate. Push-pull, okay? So I push-pull out, like so. I'm going to step forward with my right foot and cut. Itch. Right behind my head and cut. So I should have edge, edge forward, okay? So the circle, the uh, semi-circle edge forward, like so. All right? Good. Good job. It's back. Good. All right. Good. Now from there, drop the sword down. Bring your hand back to your side. If you don't have a side, put your hand, thumb in your belt. Okay. If you don't have a side, okay. And imagine your hand is your guard. I didn't say put your hand there. Okay. Follow directions. All right. Now take your sword, put it out to the side like this. All right. So my hand is on now on my the end of my side. I'm gonna make like a little mouth, like this. On the end of my side here, I'm gonna bring my sword back and rest it right on my uh, end of my side and on my fingers. So I'm actually pinching the sword. So I can hold on like that. <laughs> like that. All right, so I have the back of the edge of the sword, not the cutting edge, okay? You got the cutting edge. You got the sword upside down. Flip it over. Flip it over. Yeah. You're here. There you go. Okay. There you go. And then, watch this. I'm going to pull the sword and the side back. Let the tip drop in. And then push forward. So push the sword into the side and the side onto the sword. Push both together. Get it about three quarters of the way there. And then I'm going to bring both of them back. All right. A lot of stuff going on there, right? Okay, so watch what I do. I'm going to go from here. I'm going to undo this. I'm going to loosen, draw, cut. Bring it down, hand to the side, out. Back, 
Rishi, Fat, Knee, 
somebody, they'll take the sword and kind of like how you want to shake the water off your hands, or in this case, blood and guts, right? You shake that off your hands, what you're going to do is shake it off your sword. So you bring your sword up like this and go, Hoop! and flip it off like that, all right? So it's kind of like flipping uh, you know, water or something off your, off your hands, okay? So what we're going to do is from this position is bring the sword up with one hand, up to your shoulder so that your sword is kind of even with your ear. All right, then from there, it's going to go over your head and end up at a, about a 45 degree position with the sword about almost equal to this leg. Okay, don't go too far out. You want it about the end of the sword about equal to that leg. Arm out about a 45 degree position and then the sword back in about 45. All right? Good. Got it? Good. All right. Then from there, you can receive your sword. Boom. Got it. All right. So again, draw. Boom. Good. Bring it down. Grab. Use your left hand to grab your saya. Shibuti. Up. Over the head. Good. Bring it back. And receive your sword. Very good. Just be careful as you do this. Okay? Okay. I used to have hair. You were asking about the injuries. You know. There actually was a guy that, um, when Sunky was teaching the Ido back in the day, we had a, a gentleman that was a student. He was a black belt student, and he was a doctor in the Navy at the Naval Hospital. 
and he was in the emergency room doing emergency care. They had a guy on a Saturday night come in, and he was came in like this, and uh, so he goes in to care for the guy. He says, "What happened?" He says, uh, "Well, I'm in the martial arts, and you know, I was, I was doing sword. I'm doing this cool move that you take the sword, you kind of over your head like that." And he says, "I missed. And that sliced my head. And he had a flap like this." They take it, and the guy's name was Greg. That was, that was a student, and he goes, "Look." I take martial arts too. <laughs> and as he's showing this guy, I'm trying not to laugh. He says, you should come take it for real. And I will, my instructor will show you how as he shows this guy's scalp back up. You know? So be careful. Be careful. So, you know, you don't know what you're doing. You can really hurt yourself. Well, this guy really had going, <laughs> taking a nice slice at a flat. So anyway, okay. Imagine. But we've had people in this class that there is a EI kata that these guys uh, have learned where you actually go behind you. And we've had Sensei Tippett stick this straight in his leg. Okay. I've had other people who stuck it through their side. I've had other people who stuck it in this way. Okay, that's scary. All right. And uh, so, you know, be careful, be cautious. And other people who cut their fingers doing the this part, you know, because that's very close to the blade. That kind of thing. Main thing is when you're learning how to do the sword, don't buy a sharp sword. Okay, you don't need to buy a sharp sword. This is not a sharp blade. Okay, I can do that with this blade. It's not real sharp. Okay, it's it's it's. I mean, I could probably chop something, but it's not a sharp sharp blade. Do that. It's not. It's not going to cut. All right. I, I didn't want me to chop you, but it, it's not going to cut me like that. All right? Yes. So there's some say that now if I stab you, it'd be a different story. Yes. Does that sound to you? All right? Us? Yes. Okay. All right. Now, the next cut we're going to do is this first cut is basically taking here and going right to the head. All right? Giving this guy a split personality. All right. <laughs> the next one is basically going to be from here, we're going to take the right hand which is what's going to control our, basically where the sword is going to go, okay, with as far as direction. So I'm going to take the right hand, I'm going to bring it over to the right side slightly. So what's going to happen is as I come forward, I'm doing the same motion with my hand as I did with the overhead strike, and I'm going to go like this and go here from this shoulder down to the waist, all right, doing what's called a, basically a 45 cut, all right? So what happens is I cut it from this shoulder through the chest down to the waist here. All right? This side of the body slides off. You get this nice spelling effect. <laughs> and that's basically it. Okay? All right? So here, across, like so. Okay? Don't worry, I won't cut you unless I really want to. Don't make me want to. Okay. Here we go. So from here, the shoot on the mind. Bring the sword up, right hand goes over slightly, step forward and cut the straight forward. Okay, so now you stop your hands about at your waist, and then bring it back to center, out to the side, bring it up, over, and back to the sheet. Okay, ready again, draw, 
opposite of that. That basically is going to draw and cut the other way. Cut the same cut, but in the opposite direction. So we're going to come from here, and I'm going to open the sword up, take the other hand, turn the sword over to a 45 position opposite. And I'm going to draw this way and cut from the waist up to the shoulder. All right? This way. So I'm going to go. All right? And again, you get the body slide up, get the down, and all that stuff, okay? Okay? At, right as you do that, you have to turn your side up back over. All right? So you got to remember to do that. Otherwise, then you're doing this. What's the problem? Match. Yeah. yeah, you're going to split this in two, okay? A lot of students have done that, okay? So you got to be careful of that. If you have one of these, you got to make sure that you turn that over. So that has to become second nature by doing it over and over. And then you go to turn it back. You have to turn that back over. So as you, as you go through the motions and the movements and the content and so forth, you do this move, then you come back and turn it over as you start into the next move. So before you let go of that, make sure you turn that over. Us? Us. Okay, ready? Here we go. So from here, bring your hand up, open it up. Right hand comes up, turns it over. Ready, draw out and up. Good. Now, bring the sword back. Now let's cut down the same way. Take, so take the left foot, step forward, cut 45 down. Boom. There you go. Bring the sword back to center. Chibui. And resheath. And back. Boom. All right. There you go. Again. So I'm going from here, cutting up, back. Getting ready, cutting down. All right, so what's happening is I'm cutting through this guy from the waist to the shoulder. I didn't get all the way through, so I'm gonna finish the job and go shoulder to waist. Us? Us. All right, the first one, put your sword out if you want. All right, the first one, he gets ready to chop me. The first one could be I'm chopping his arms off. Okay, and then the second one, I'm chopping him. <laughs> All right, so it's kind of, it's kind of, sword work is gross and gory. Sorry, it is. You got body parts all over the place. You got a lot of blood and guts and all that. It's pretty gory. Okay, but that's just, it just is. And the kata are really short. Because it doesn't take much to chop this guy in pieces. <laughs> so the kata's over, you know, chop, chop, boom, guy's dead. Okay, it's over, all right? Us. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ready? And turn it over. Here we go. John Lee's turn over and stop. Cut up. Now step back and change the hand. Step forward the other foot. Knee. Pull it in. All right, here we go. Chibuti. Boom. Back. Receive. Boom. And pull back. So far, so good. Again, ready? Step, ready, unlock, turn it over, and cut up. Whoa. And knee, back, cut down. Whoa. Pull it in, and it's your booty, and back, and all the way back. Good. All right, again, ready? And it's cut up. It's done. Back and cut down. There you go. Back to center. It's your booty. Boom. And back. Receive. And back. Nice. Yes, sir. Why do you have, like, carry your sword around? Why do you carry your sword around? Back in, you know, in these days, you better not, because there's things called cops, okay? And they will look at you and go, 
We need to wrestle. All right, but back in the days, um, this was not just a weapon that you would carry. This was your, this was your badge of honor. You know, this was the thing that you would carry that would say, I am a man that is very, very uh, high level uh, of honor, okay? If you were a samurai, you carried a sword because you were born into that, um, that, I guess you could say that caste, that, that, uh, that level of, of people. Because you had to be born as a, as a samurai, you couldn't just become a samurai. You had to be born into that. But anyway, the um, and this was really truly your badge of honor that you carried with you. It was um, something that you revered and you, you took good care of and, and everything. And it was you'd rather die than have your sword taken away from you. All right. Um, as a matter of fact, the uh, samurai that they committed some sort of crime or if they committed some sort of uh, uh, dishonor to their lord that they were serving, they would uh, rather commit uh, suicide, the, the ritual suicide where they would cut their bellies and somebody would chop off their head, than not uh, give up their sword. Because they would retain their honor if they used their sword to kill themselves, uh, but they would, uh, they would still have their sword. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it was a whole different way of thinking than we than we understand, right? But, but they were also Shinto or Buddhist, which meant that they believed in reincarnation. So if they died an honorable death, they come back as a yeah, well, yeah, something. But they come back as <laughs> if they died honorably, they come back as a higher you know level person. Okay. So they, they believed that death was just the next step to you know what, what they were going to become next time. So death was not the end to them. So it was a very different way of thinking from what the way we think. All right? A very different way of thinking. Okay? Very, very different. Um, so they, they weren't afraid of death like we, you know, think of death. All right? Um, also, the, uh, the samurai, um, they... If you walked around, you walked around with your sword. Uh, you you carried it everywhere, pretty much. You slept beside it and uh, ate ate with it beside you, and I mean everything. It, this was something you didn't just put in the closet and go play it outside or something. You know, I mean it, it went with you everywhere. So it was it was very important. And then the swords they were made uh, by swordsmiths and very very important people that knew how to do this for centuries and. Uh, they would make them by hand and it would take up to a year to make one sword sometimes. Some of the very, very good, good, good swords. So they would take a very, very long time to make a sword and uh, they would fold and fold steel over and over time, sometimes as many as 30,000 layers of steel. Okay, to fold over and over and over uh, to make a good sword. So it was quite a process to say the least. All right? Okay, so now. Uh, so now let's say I got I have this guy. Okay, he draws his sword. So I cut him, whoop, and then I finish him. I cut him, whoop, and his body parts fall. Okay, now he's still kicking and struggling a little bit. Okay, <laughs> so what I want to do, okay, is put him out of his misery because I'm a samurai and he's a samurai. I want him to die an honorable death. So what I'm going to do is pull my sword in and I'm going to slice his throat. So he dies. Okay. Now I take and throw the blood on him. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. And then I'm done. All right. So that that's basically my story. Okay. Now this last part I did, uh, we call just call it zanshin, like we do in the kata. But you pull the sword in to your uh, to your center. Okay. What's called the hara. Okay. The center. And then we push forward slowly. Okay. And that would either be like cutting the neck or Sometimes you'd want to check to see if they were done, like sticking a fork in. So you'd slowly stick your sword into their body to see if they jumped. All right? So if you stick it in nice and slow and they jump, you know you need to do some more cutting. Okay? So you do some more. All right? If they didn't jump, then you knew you'd done the job. All right? Okay, so.
When we do the cutting, we're going to do our first cut. We're going to come back, we're going to cut the second time. Then we're going to pull the sword in and push. And then we do our shibuti. And then we do our rishi. And then we're back. to finish pulling the sword and the saya back into the position as my body comes back to here. Okay? I'm going to end up at kind of a 45 position here. And then the hand comes up and lock it into position. Then I look up and my foot comes forward. I go one, two, three. And I finish here. Plus, that is the first cut. Okay, there you go. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's not 54 moves long, right? Yeah, okay. That is the first Iaido kata. It's called Shin. Okay, Shin. Shin. All right? Okay, so let's try it. Ready? S H I. Shin. Oh, Shin. And it's the sun is very much out of your belt. Yeah. 
a step back. Yeah. Almost Mr. All right. All right. Cool. Very much 45. All right. Close One more time. Ready? You've got like an inch left. She. A she. A she. Ready? Itch. Step behind you. One, two, slide back. Three. You just did number two. Just. Two cards in one night. Yes. How about that? Okay. Ready? Red. Red. And itch. Open. Cut. Knee, step, turn, cut. Damn. The first one goes to the head, the second one slices all the way down. Pull in, push forward. And itch, shibuti. And she. Itch, pull it back. Pull left foot back. And then step forward. One, two, three. Right foot behind you. One, two, three. Good. All right. Got it? Okay. One more time. So let me show you real quick. So I got Mr. Noah here. He is coming at my head. All right. So here it comes. He's coming at my head. Slow motion. Here he comes. Oh, no. So pulling the sword out is my block. And then, oh, I guess what's going to happen? Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Now, normally, samurai are not going to try to chop each other in the head because that is really hard. Okay? Hard head. Okay? Ask his mom. Okay? <laughs> anyway. Okay? But they're probably going to go for something like the shoulder, and that's going to cut an arm off. All right? So they're going to do something like that. Now, this gets embedded there, right? So then when I go to turn, 
I'm gonna go like this and go. <laughs> And just, just twist that all around and then go. All right, and then go this guy. Here's, oh, guess who's over here? All right, so here she comes. She's coming, get ready to atta attack me. She goes, boom. Too late. Okay, I give her a toe split this time. Okay, I'm sorry. But she was so beautiful. <laughs> she tried to attack me. Now she's double beautiful. <laughs> It's just part of the um, uh, getting back to your spot and that, that kind of stuff. Um, and, and, and normally, all this is done in Seiza. Okay? The, the true cut is done in Seiza. This is the standing version of it. But the traditional version is down in Seiza, which is harder. Okay? So I'm trying to teach you today. I'm trying to teach people the cutting, the cuts and all first standing, because uh, it's hard to teach the Seiza version and the cuts at the same time because you're struggling with how to get up and down and all that stuff uh, along with trying to cut. So it's, that makes it difficult, all right? So learn the cuts <coughs> first and then later on get down to do the Seiza. All right, good question. Other questions? With the length of these katas, I'm assuming that one would not usually do this for a weapons kata competition or what? You, you can uh what you do is you just usually uh, pick out several of them yes. and you do them all in a all in a row 
something like that, okay? okay. We do have one kata that is a longer kata. Um, it's not terribly long, about 12 moves, something like that. Yeah. I'm counting, I'm guessing. But uh, it's not a terribly long kata. But, uh, uh, and then you'll see a lot of really made up wild versions <laughs> of people who have no idea what they're doing with the sword. <laughs> okay, and uh, it gets crazy. Could do it that way, or you could just not say any, not to say anything, and just go from one card to the next, 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 next. So you know, you can work, work it out either way. Okay, depend on what, what the kind of tournament you're doing too. Okay, if it's uh, if it's a tournament, and they have and there are some tournaments that have an Eido division. In that tournament, you go much more formally, where you're calling up the name of the Kanto and that kind of thing, because uh, they they've got judges that know what you're doing. Okay. In more of a an open tournament where you're doing like weapons division, um, then uh, you have, please don't do that to me. Thank you. Um, <laughs> then uh, you, you've got to be, um, you know, a little more. It's got to be more flow. Uh, I would. I really don't suggest it for a tournament just because it's not real flashy. Okay, it's beautiful to us, but it, it's just not flashy. Where you got a bow going, pow, 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 you know, and come on with it and that kind of stuff. It, it's hard to win with sword, uh, traditional sword like that. You know, get somebody to get up and they'll be jumping around doing backflips with the sword. <laughs> but they do have the EI division at the nationals. Yes, they, at the nationals they have an EI no division. That's what they do. So. For any belt level or just one belt for this one? I'm sorry, this is a. Uh, yeah, I think it's just, I think it's bad. The reason uh, we use bamboo is it looks cool. But uh, bamboo is supposedly about the same consistency as like a human bone. Now, I don't know who got their bone cut on over to, to, to tell that. I, I, I don't know. I, it wasn't me. I didn't, but uh, they supposedly say that it's about the same as, as like a human bone. So when they wrap, a lot of times you'll see they'll take a uh, piece of bamboo like this and then they'll wrap it with straw mat. So that way it's like the flesh, the muscle, and then the bone. So um, bamboo is extremely strong. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I was in uh, visiting in China, it was very interesting that we went by a building that they were doing renovations to and they had scaffolding that was made out of bamboo. I went, well, that's not OSHA approved. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was fascinating. And bamboo is very, very strong. Uh, this bamboo came actually from across the street from where I used to live. I uh, lived in a house and right across the street, I mean, right across the street was an old bamboo grove. And uh, this is one of the smaller pieces. This is the bottom half. This is the top half of the same piece. And then there was probably about 15 feet more. So this is probably about 30 feet high. Um, and there were pieces that I couldn't get one hand around. There was a, a gentleman that lived next door to me that had about three acres of land. And in the back, he had a bamboo, full little bamboo grove that he had paths, paths through. <laughs> and there were pieces of uh, little bamboo trees back there that he had that you couldn't get back both hands around. Um, and just fascinating. I always wanted to put it in my yard, but the problem is you can't control this stuff. Uh, once it once it grows, it grows underground and just pops up anywhere it wants to. <laughs> uh, so Kikuniba planted some in his yard, and uh, the neighbors weren't very happy because it started popping up in their yard, <laughs> and then started popping up in his front yard. <laughs> so it'll pop up anywhere. And the only you really can't control it once it once it starts. It, it, it's very hard to kill. Um, the uh, night, the the nice part about it is it's kind of fun to watch it grow because it would pop out of the ground. The little shoots would pop out of the ground. You'd see them in uh, about April, and uh, they'd be about that tall. You know, the first time you'd see them, and go to work, and you see these little shoots coming out of the ground. You come home, they'd be that tall, 
And then the next day you come home and they'd be this tall. And the next day they'd be that tall, okay? Well, they grow about two feet a day. And so in two weeks, they'd be 30 feet tall. Uh, it's, it's incredible how fast it grows. And uh, it grows very strong, very fast. And uh, it's, it's an amazing plant. Is so it, anyway, is it native? Uh, this bamboo, I don't believe so. Okay. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know for sure. I don't believe. It. I don't believe it is. It's most under a species of invasive species. What's that? Prairie grass. It's For the, mostly invasive. Inv invasive species. Yeah. I would think so. <clears throat> so anyway. Okay. So there are lots of types of bamboo and breeds and things like that. It all comes from the same family. So. All right. So what we're going to do is. Uh, do some cutting on this and see if I can cut through a human bone. Ooh. Anybody want to volunteer? Yeah, bro. Your son, your parents are trying to wait for that, that kind of thing. Yeah. Huh. Us. <laughs> take two pieces just two pieces out of the blue and put it together and do you have a straight angle and if you can do that with any two pieces then your cuts are consistent and and straight 